It's been almost two years since the COVID-19 pandemic began, and it is unlikely that anyone you meet today will tell you that life is the same as it was before. But what has the impact been like on the global community? As of Monday, November 1st, five million people have died from COVID-19. In fact, death by infection of COVID-19 is now the third leading cause of death following heart disease and stroke. Despite voices skeptical of the legitimacy of the virus, these numbers signal that the virus is not akin to a common cold or flu. But which countries are experiencing the highest death tolls around the world? Surprisingly, resource-rich countries have been the hardest hit from the pandemic. For instance, while Brazil, Britain, the European Union, and the United States comprise one-eighth of the global population, these nations together account for nearly half of the COVID-19 deaths. While the pandemic did have devastating impacts on India over the last few months, today it appears that the virus is surging through Russia and Eastern Europe. This region is in the red zone of COVID-19 as residents are distrustful of vaccines and their government. Importantly, these numbers deal only with reported deaths from COVID-19. As a result, the actual global impact is not entirely known. This is especially true in poorer regions where reporting issues may make the total death toll appear smaller than it truly is. Speaking of vaccines, according to the UN, health leaders concur that a world free from COVID-19 will not be possible until every individual has equal access to the vaccines. As it currently stands, developed countries are much more likely to have their populations vaccinated. This could prolong the pandemic and widen global inequality gaps. Not only is this important because each individual is deserving of the same right to protection from COVID, it is also important if we want to prevent more deadly variants from emerging. Although research suggests that enough vaccines will be made in 2021 to vaccinate 70% of the world population, most of these vaccines are being reserved by wealthier countries. Additionally, other countries who are making vaccinations are delaying exportation until their own population is vaccinated first. To further complicate the matter, while some regions have hardly seen vaccine opportunities, others have an almost fully vaccinated population moving towards receiving booster shots. As of October 27th, according to the UN's COVID-19 data futures platform, one in two people in high-income countries have been vaccinated with at least one dose. Meanwhile, only one in 21 people in a low-income country have had the same opportunity. 24 vaccines have been approved by at least one national regulatory authority, and data from UNICEF shows that the cost of vaccines can range from $2 to $37. Additionally, the average cost of distribution is $3.70. This is particularly challenging for poorer countries who have an annual health expenditure of $41 per capita. Without support to purchase these vaccines, such countries could face spending an additional 30 to 60 percent in order to afford being able to vaccinate 70 percent of their populations. With all of this in mind, although equitable distribution of vaccines is a goal, we should remember that addressing the spread of COVID-19 is a multi-pronged effort. That is to say, it will take more than vaccines to address the existing global health disparities. While some people do not have access to vaccines, others are unwilling to take them. Since the vaccines, and especially vaccine mandates, have emerged, protests have taken place across the world. These protests are critical of COVID-19 public health measures and have resisted government regulations that aim to slow the spread of COVID-19. Across the United States, for instance, vaccine and mask mandates have been at the center of heated debates in classrooms and have been on the cause of multiple assaults on healthcare workers, teachers, and flight attendants. In Staten Island, for instance, mobs of angry people gathered on Sunday, October 31st in order to protest against New York State's vaccine mandates for COVID-19. Some protesters threatened violence in the case that children would be forced to take the vaccine. It is clear then that since 2020, how best to deal with COVID-19 has been a hotly debated topic where both sides of the debate have drawn lines in the sand, unwilling to concede to the other. What has caused this lack of trust in the scientific community? One possible reason may be due to the rise of an infodemic growing in parallel to the COVID-19 pandemic. While traditionally scientific research has been created for other academics to scrutinize, in light of the growing concern with COVID-19, politicians, media actors, and other stakeholders took data from researchers and either manipulated it to fit their agendas or oversimplified and miscommunicated their findings. 
This led to a vast amount of contradictory and often inaccurate information being spread across the world through the internet and especially through social media. Since the scientific community has not emphasized making their work accessible to everyday people, these information asymmetries coupled with the exposure to an overwhelming amount of contradictory information related to the pandemic may have made some individuals incredibly skeptical of the scientific community. Vaccines are one critical aspect of addressing COVID-19. However, alone, they are not enough. COVID-19 has hit areas that are already grappling with crumbling healthcare systems and other social, political, and economic crises. What has COVID-19 looked like for countries across the globe? Over in Canada, Alberta's healthcare system became overwhelmed by COVID-19, leading to many deaths across the province. Around mid-May of 2021, Alberta's case rates hit the highest in all of North America. Months later, with laxing COVID-19 restrictions and a premier who was ready to return to normalcy before it was safe to do so, the province had 34% of the total active cases in Canada, even though it only made up 11% of the population. In September, according to CBC News, Albertans were dying from COVID-19 at more than three times the average rate that other Canadians were. Additionally, nursing homes across Canada were also hit hard by COVID-19. As of early in the year, they represented 7% of all cases, but 50% of all deaths related to COVID-19. This can be attributed to the fact that they were underfunded, understaffed, and residents were subjected to terrible hygiene conditions, including being left in soiled clothing and being abandoned in rooms with those infected with COVID-19 without attempts at segregation. In Russia, while the country enters a deadly fourth wave, it has been suggested some residents remain more fearful of the vaccine itself rather than the rise in cases. Currently, just over one third of the Russian population is fully vaccinated. As of October 31st, the National Coronavirus Task Force reported 40,993 new infections the previous day. Meanwhile, the death toll from the same day was 1,158. This is slightly less than Friday's death toll, which was a total of 1,163 lives lost that day. Overall, Russia faces the largest death toll in Europe, with 238,538 individuals who have passed away because of COVID. Similarly, those in the Ukraine remain even more skeptical of vaccines. In fact, while citizens have access to a host of vaccine options, less than a fifth of the population has chosen to get the jab. This makes Ukraine's rate of vaccine uptake the second smallest in all of Europe. To date, 2.94 million people in the nation have been infected with COVID-19 and 68,027 people have died. Continuing forward, the capital of the Ukraine has begun to implement stricter COVID-19 regulations including introducing proof of vaccination certificates to use non-essential services and mandatory vaccines for workers. In India, during May of 2021, the country accounted for half of the worldwide infections of COVID-19. During this time, in early May and late April, India also accounted for one quarter of global coronavirus deaths. Hospitals struggled to find beds and oxygen as the healthcare infrastructure was not equipped to deal with the influx of COVID-19 cases. Many died and ambulances are parked in their car, awaiting hospital care. Early in the pandemic, Italy was hit hard with COVID-19 cases and deaths. Italy was the first European country to be affected by COVID-19. As of late November, the death toll reached 50,000 people. In this way, the country joined the United States, Brazil, India, Mexico, and the United Kingdom, who all reached 50,000 deaths before Italy. It seems that nations across the world have dealt with and experienced the pandemic in very different ways. In your opinion, how has your country or region managed the pandemic to date? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in. This is Ava Blackwell and you're watching the International News Channel. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to keep up to date on all of our latest content.